In today's episode, Chef Cerulli shows Chef Erica how to make his delicious apple French roast for Rosh Hashanah. That looks beautiful. Check this out. Yeah. Not gonna lie, this is a beautiful dish. It is. What a flavor punch. Mm -hmm. mm, really good. Welcome back to the Prairie Street Culinary Kitchen. I'm Chef Erica, you know me, but with me today is my new friend, Cerulli Meyer who is our social media and marketing manager. It's really, what are you doing here with us cooking? How'd this all happen? Well, I do the marketing, but I also do home cooking on the side. I have my own Instagram, and um, we were discussing some recipes for Rosh Hashanah, mm. and I happened to have this recipe that I worked on. Today, we're making apple French roast for Rosh Hashanah using Prairie Street's French roast. And it's perfect for Rosh Hashanah because Rosh Hashanah is all about sweetness. We want to do a sweet new year. It's the beginning of the new Jewish year. So there's a lot of different sweet ingredients here, mm -hmm. balanced out with a little bit of savory. So tell me what goes into this recipe. Well, we have the apple, so everybody knows you dip the apple in the honey. Right. So we have honey here. Mm -hmm. And then we also have pomegranate juice, which as we know is something that we eat as a new fruit. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have the raw pomegranate juice, which is gonna be a balance for some of the other flavors. And then the garnish for finishing, we're gonna have pomegranate seeds. That sounds really delicious. I'm very excited. And I love the symbolism of all the different foods in there too. It's yes. sort of a very beautiful dish to introduce the new year. So what cut of meat are you going to cook? This is a French roast from Prairie Street. Mm -hmm. It's actually a beautiful piece. And it's a part of a chuck, which is really the shoulder. Yeah. So it's a really great piece. And all together, it's going to come out just really a gorgeous, tender flavor. So it's a cut that you would braise. Yes. You want to cook it in liquid. The wine which we're using, which is a Merlot, which is specifically meant for um, braising, this is going to break it down. Some of the proteins is going to tenderize it. And it also has a little bit of a sweetness in the Merlot, which adds to the whole kind of sweetness thing. Mm. It's a little fruity. Sounds really good. OK, so let me get this started for you. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you okay. so much. OK, and how would you like these cut? Let's get them. Uh, dice? Little small, but not minced. Okay, so maybe like the size of pomegranate seeds? Yes, a oh, pomegranate seed size. Pomegranate seed size dice, perfect. Okay. That's right. All right, and while I'm doing this, you can tell us some more yes. about your preparation. Well, what we're gonna do, the reason why we're doing this now is because we're gonna create a little bit of a glaze, uh -huh. and we want it to sear to get the flavor locked in. So when we do the searing process, which does help lock in all the flavors, we want it to have a little bit of this shallots, which is a little bit of the savory, and then also the sweet, which is going to be the apples, and mixed together with the wine. Okay. So that's gonna help sear the meat in. And then once that flavor is locked in, we're gonna put the rest of the spice rub, which we're gonna put together in a second, and also the pomegranate juice and the honey, and that's gonna combine to break down a little bit of the flavors. Got it, so tell me what's in your spice rub. In my spice rub, we have garlic powder, mm -hmm. we have a little bit of brown sugar, we have some minced garlic, some onion powder, some black pepper, and we also have sage. Okay, nice. So you're yes. getting like really nice kind of autumnal flavors yes. in there too. The sage to me is like a very fall That's right. kind of herb. Beautiful. And the apples you want in large dice also? Yes, large, okay. uh, large dice. Okay, great. And then we're gonna top it off with the rosemary once we put it into the oven. The rosemary, again, with the, with the French cooking, it's a lot of herbs, mm -hmm. and I think that the rosemary just has a really I mean, I'll be honest, I love how it smells. So I love how yeah, it, smells, it smells, and great. I love that that smell, it gives that flavor into everything, and it just really balances all the different sweet and savory flavors with that, like, how would you even describe the rosemary? It has like a... It's um, piney and resinous. Piney, yes. Those are the words you use. It's so rosemary. pleasant. Piney and resinous. It is, it's beautiful, and it's really good with apples. Yes, It's like it a is. great pairing with apples. Yeah, so and again, gonna... like another fall kind of flavor. That's right. Perfect for Rosh Hashanah. What kind of apples are we using? We're using red apples. Um, I've used Honeycrisp in the best. Obviously, the honey, it's a little more of a sweet flavor. Mm -hmm. I don't like using the green apples. Too tart. Too tart. And we've already, you know, like I said, this is a focus on a sweet dish. Mm -hmm. And the things that we have in here to break it down to give it a little bit more of savory is enough. We have the garlic, we have the pomegranate juice, and we have the shallots, that's enough. So I didn't want to use the green apples. And again, and more with the motif of Rosh Hashanah, which is everything right. sweet, right. honey crisp, a lot of honey. And these apples also braise and cook very well. So do the apples break down? Do they yes. sort of soften up and they dissolve in up. there? They soften up. 
they soften up, okay. and that is another reason why we don't make them too diced. We make them in nice bigger chunks. Is this good, this size? Yes, this okay. is a perfect size. And I just want to also say thank you to Erica for cutting it. Actually, Erica is our resident knife skills expert, <laughs> and I would strongly recommend yeah. going to our channel and watching the amazing video where Erica does you know, her best job to teach us how to use yes. a knife properly. I'm the Prairie Street cooking teacher in the yeah. house. It's so important. Yeah, it it's is. The most important thing you could do in the kitchen is knife skills. Yep. It's in the pinned comments. So we've got the apples and the shallots prepped. So That's now right. talk to me about your rub. Let's do okay, it. Okay, so now we are going to mix together the rub. We're going to put in pepper. Okay, freshly ground black pepper. Yes, that would be important. the best. Next, we're going to put in the onion powder. Okay. The garlic powder. And we'll add in some of the sage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is very finely powdered sage. Yes. Rubbed sage, okay. Then we are gonna add in some brown sugar. Okay, teeny bit. Not too much, just yeah. a little bit. We have a lot of sweet going on in yes. this recipe. Some minced garlic. I like that in this recipe, you only have this tiny little bit of sugar and all the sweetness is coming from all these other great natural ingredients like the apples and That's the pomegranate. Right. All right, now we're gonna be making the glaze, which is gonna okay. be the wine. So this is the Merlot. This is the Merlot. Okay. And we're gonna take a little pomegranate juice. Nice. And we're gonna add the honey. Mm. This is gonna come nice Sweet and here. slow. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna whisk okay. this up together. Got Obviously it. the honey is a little bit of a... Yeah, it'll take a second to dissolve in there, right? right? Yeah, that always happens with honey. Honey is a little bit of a thicker texture. Yeah. Okay, all the prep is done and we're gonna get straight now to the cook. Let's do it. Let's cook this French roast. Let's roast it. I'm excited. So this is a beautiful piece of meat. It is beautiful. Let's take a moment to appreciate the beauty of this Tell piece us. of Tell meat. Tell us about this meat. It looks so good. It has beautiful marbling on it, really nice ratio of meat to fat. And because it's from the shoulder, shoulder tends to be a tough cut, but we love that right. because that means there's lots of collagen and lots of fat. And when you cook it in liquid, especially acidic liquid like That's we're right. doing, it's going to get really tender and it's going to have that like amazing mouth feel that we love from a good braise. Yes. So I am okay, so excited. What happens next? The thing is like this. It's beautiful and it's big, but we also got to get it to fit in the pan. In the pan. <laughs> so know. we're going to cut away a little bit over here, okay. only from this side because we want to keep as much thickness even as thickness. possible. Keep it even thickness. Right. This whole piece is amazing. If you get yourself a little bit of a bigger pan, you could definitely yeah. do this recipe with this size meat. But because we have this pan, we want it to really make sure that there's space around oh, the side. Okay. So we're going to cut it a little bit just to fit in here. Okay, so let me trim this for yes. you. And we're talking right yeah, about there. Perfect. That'll even it out. We'll get a nice gonna, shape yeah, to it. Excellent. Okay. Right, so it's a nice big piece of meat. Beautiful. Slice that. And so we've got this really nice squared off piece. And what's important, it's evenly thick. Yes. Very right, so good. even thickness all around for even cooking. All right, what excellent. What happens now? Now I'm going to turn this baby up. We're going to make it a little hotter so that we could start the process. Okay. So I noticed that the pan you're using, this is enamel coated That's cast right. iron. And tell me what the difference is. So enamel coated cast iron is cast iron that has this baked on coating to right. it. You could do it in this or I would do it in stainless steel. But what I would not use is just plain cast iron That's right. because cast iron doesn't really like acid that much. And we have a lot of acid in this dish and you can get sort of like off flavors. So mm. this is the perfect choice of pan. Excellent. Good that job. That makes you the really? expert with the tips. Yeah, I'm all about the tips. Okay, so we're gonna put a little bit of olive oil in and we're gonna put a little bit of these shallots in, but we're not gonna put all of them in. Again, this is just for flavor oh, okay. for this glaze. So you're doing like a preliminary step. A preliminary. First. A little flavor booster. Stages, flavor I like stages. It. How do you like that? I like that. And those are very nicely cut. They are wonderfully cut by our knife expert. And now we're gonna actually take some of these apples and we'll look for some of the smaller pieces. Okay. And the point of this is to just get some of these flavors in locked in beforehand. And then we're, after that, we're gonna add in a wine, the Merlot. And once okay. we got a little bit of a glaze going, I'm gonna use that for the searing. So are you looking to get some color on those apples? Do you want to yeah. get them a little seared, a little golden? Yeah, I want to get them okay. a little bit braised, a little okay. bit broken okay. down. Okay. And do you want the spice rub on the meat while yeah, you're Yeah, we're going to put the spice rub on the meat. Would you like me to do that? Yes, please. On Thank both you so sides? much. Uh, I think just on the top side is okay. good. Okay. Let me get that going for you. 
Okay, so now you've got a little bit of color on your apples and your onions. They're getting soft. Now you're going to pour in some wine. I'm going to pour in a little bit of wine. Okay. It's going to make a big... Ooh, baby. Yeah. This is a clean shirt. I'm stepping back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, I got some speckles. Oh. I got some speckles. Truly, you know. It's okay. You know what? If you don't get dirty in the kitchen, were you there? So that's not. really reduced now. You have like almost no liquid left. You have a nice glaze. That's right. We want the sear to be straight as much on yeah. the pan as possible. So you're making a glaze and now you're going to drop this that's in and right. pick up. We're okay. going to lock Let's in go. these love flavors. Let's move that meat. Into this baby and right here. And you put it the rub side down. Yes. Got it, got it, got it. And it, look how nicely that's going to fit right in that pan. It's nice and snug. Nice and Tuck snug. it in. Let's go up put it drop. to bed. Turn up your heat. Got it. Okay, so you flipped it over. Now what happens? Now we're going to add all the rest of the ingredients. We're going to add some of the apples in first. Okay. Try to get them on the side. And then we're going to also add in the rest of the shallots. We want to do that now just to go back and forth a little bit. Let's get some more apples in here. Yummy, yummy apples. Sweet and delicious. All right. All right. Now so we're now going to put the rest of this the rest of the sauce. Vino. So we're going to put it around here. Okay. You see, I'm an expert pourer. You're really good at pouring. Thank you. Heard, Skill you perfect. I've perfected this my whole Especially life. Especially wine. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh huh. Then we're gonna add your palms. pomegranates. Okay. Not gonna lie, this is a beautiful dish. It is. So it's meant to be both sweet and also beautiful. Yeah, that's a sexy roast. Thank you. Yeah. And then Rosemary. we're gonna add a little bit here. Okay. This is where the artistry comes in a little mm. bit. You know, we gotta. Gotta Just give it a little bit of right. picture-perfect love. So this is going in the oven for quite a while. Yeah, that's right. So you need a good amount of liquid. That's right. Yeah, you want to come up at least halfway up the sides of your protein when you're braising because you're in there for a long time, and it's really the liquid that causes that connective tissue to start to soften and break that's down. That's right. Yeah. So we're going to hit the oven with this, and then we're looking for an internal temp of... Like around 180? I would say around 180, but... With something like this, like a braise, it's like cooking a brisket. Like you just want it to be really soft. So what I always say is I call it fork in, fork out. If I can very easily basically drop a fork in it and pull that fork right out, then That's I'm good, good. Another good tip. Yes, Beautiful. fork in, fork out. So we're gonna put it in for about two and a half hours. Covered. Covered yeah. at 325. Low and slow. And we'll see you back here in two and a half hours. We're going out to lunch. And voila, apple French roast for Rosh Hashanah using Prairie Street's French roast. All right, well, that looks beautiful. Check this out. Yeah, now let's slice it up. Now you need the crane to hoist it out. Yeah. Nice. Look at that. That looks great. And you can see it's really shrunk a bit, so yes. you have to factor that in, but that looks really good. Yeah, thank you. Now, it does um, look really nice, and you're right, it has gone down in size a little bit, but mm -hmm. that's like you said, you have to remember that when you're going to be cooking it, it comes like this. Right, so you factor that in. Yep. Now, this is a cut of meat that has a very distinctive grain to it. The grain is the muscle fiber pattern, and you can like, really, it's so obvious yeah. on this. We always cut against the grain, because if you don't cut against the grain, perpendicular to it, then you're cutting long stringy fibers, and that's really hard to chew, Yeah. right? So we're gonna cut it right from this tip here and start slicing. And this is a beautiful knife from Wustoff. We love our Wustoff knives here at Prairie Street. This is what's called a hollow ground slicer knife. And these little divots, that's the hollow ground. And what that does is when you're slicing, it minimizes that sort of sticking to your knife. It creates an air pocket. So when you slice things, it falls away from your knife really easily. And it's a flexible knife and it's a nice sharp blade, yes. Thanks, Wustoff. That's a beautiful knife. That is a nice knife. We're going to go right against the grain here. And when you slice, we always use it back and forth like a saw. I would never put downward pressure with that knife because that's going to force out juices. So we go back and forth just really gently like that. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go in here so we can get some nice big Ooh, pieces. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the juice coming out of that. And you can see, let's pull up a piece, that all of that connective tissue, that fat, all of that is nice and soft and melted inside now. That's what makes a beautiful braise, is when that collagen melts. That's what it's all about, because when collagen melts, it turns into gelatin, and gelatin is what's gonna actually kind of moisturize this meat from the inside. Very good. Crazy, right? But that looks really good. Very, Very nice. nicely cooked. Yeah, so we'll get a few more pieces of that. We'll plate it up, we'll put some of that great sauce over it. 
And I would say this is a successful braise I would say so of too. the French roast. So let's do it. So make sure you get some of those shallots and some of those apples in there. And then we'll get some of that sauce. Very All right. nice here. And then you do this, you use your tongs. And I get some sauce. A little spoon, of course, we want some sauce. And make it saucy. Because that sauce will be delicious. And then, of course, let's add some color. There. Beautiful. And there. Clean up your plate, very important when you serve. There you go. And don't forget. Seed it up. Some sparkling jewels of pomegranate on top there. Nice work, Sruli. Looks wow, great. Wow, looks so yeah. nice. Yeah. Let's give it a taste. I'm very excited. Mmm. Mmm. That's so good. Mm. I love it. And we have to eat this with the apple. Definitely. What a flavor punch. Mm -hmm. Really good. All right, I'm coming to your house for Rosh Hashanah this year. You're invited. Okay. Mm. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you, Prairie Street, for having me on this side of the camera. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for being here with thank me. Thank you, Sterling. And for all your knowledge. Yeah, my pleasure. So, if you want to watch this or any of our many, many other videos, check us out on prairiestreet.co. We also drop new videos every Sunday at two o'clock on our YouTube channel, and you can learn a lot. And remember that when you start with the best product and you use the right techniques, you can't go wrong. You'll have amazing meals. That's right. So thanks so much for joining us again here in the Prairie Street Culinary Kitchen. I'm Chef Erica. This is my new pal, Shruli, and we'll see you again. Thank Happy you. holidays. Subscribe to our channel now and set your notifications so you don't miss our latest recipes and chef-led tutorials. Then head over to prairiestreet.co to shop for your next big meal.